Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And God bless you from Higher Ground Church of God in Christ. I am Pastor James Alberts II, the pastor here at Higher Ground Church of God in Christ. We are broadcasting to you from the campus of Higher Ground Church of God in Christ. We want to invite you in to come in and have church service with us on this morning. Though we may be sheltered in place, we are still yet doing the work of the Lord. And Higher Ground is here to serve and to communicate to you that though we are in this prayer, perilous times, you too can still receive a word from the Lord. We are going to have a regular church service. We're going to bring you all the parts and pieces of a regular church service. We're going to have some praise and worship. We're going to give you uh, the word of the Lord. We even have our announcements and our observations that are going to be going on. But right now, we're going to call upon our deacons that they will come and give us the invocation for this morning. So if you would, let's give a good amen for Deacon White as he comes to give us our morning invocation. Amen. amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm Deacon White, High Ground Church of God in Christ. Um, and we all stand for the Bible to be inspired and holding flammable word and word. 
written word of God, we believe that there is only one God, eternally extinct in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We believe that there is only one means of being cleansed from sin, is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that the generation of the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in answering to believing prayer. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit according to Acts 2 and 4 is given to believers who ask for him. We believe that the sanctifying, sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whom dwelling the Christian enabling to live a holy and separate uh, life in the presence word. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and healthy and wise. Um, I know um, times right now are confusing and hard and stuff like that, but we just gotta keep our faith and realize and know that confusion is the work of the devil and we just need to let him know that we're gonna take back our peace of mind and our health. I went to the enemy's camp and I Fear, 
He gives us power, love, and of a sound mind so we can still continue to praise God at all times. James 5, 16 says, Effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Please pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Pray for our family, our children, our leaders. We are many members for one body. We are the body of Christ. We have different avenues to reach out to each other. There's Zoom, there's conference calls. Please check on everyone. Thank you for your time and attention. Be blessed. Well, God bless you, each and every one of you. I certainly thank God that you have tuned in on today. Um, I want to thank God for the skeleton crew that we have here, the support team that we have. Um, for those of you higher ground that are wondering who's at the church and who is not, don't worry, you didn't get left out. Um, but we are doing our absolute best to adhere to the standards that are set in order to keep us all safe. I want to take an opportunity to be able to uh, speak to the current situation that we are in. Uh, the, 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 the current virus pandemic that is going around has affected many of all shapes and sizes, of all ages, of all groups. It is not limited to young or old. It's not limited to a race or to a creed or even to a region. We are in the midst of a situation where everyone, everyone has a challenge. Uh, everyone is under attack. Everyone is under assault. This invisible danger is no different than the enemy himself coming at us. But I need you to know and recognize that though these things are going on, we are not in a situation or circumstance where we are outside of the power of God. God is still yet in control. And so I want you to be comforted in the fact that God is watching you even right now. There's a concern maybe that some of you have that the churches are closed and sometimes when you close churches, oh my God, what's going on? I want you to know something right now. It is my, it is my belief that right now at this very moment that there are more people in church right now than have ever been in church at any time since we have known it, maybe since 9-11, maybe even before that. Because when, when there is trouble, in times of trouble, we go to our faith and we go looking for it. And technology is making it such that I am talking to you right now. I am talking to you on your phone. I am talking to you on your TV. I am talking to you from your computer and from your tablet. I am talking to you, each and every one of you right now. And all across this nation and around the world, we are broadcasting one, one church after another after another to make sure that God's people are being fed, that their faith is being encouraged, that they in themselves are being empowered. And you are a part of God's greatest move that he has done in any of our lifetimes. And so don't be discouraged because God is yet still in the healing business. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 It is good to be here with you on today. I am Pastor Alberts. Uh, I'm the senior pastor here at Higher Ground Church of God in Christ, and we are broadcasting to you live from Higher Ground Church of God in Christ campus. We are working, uh, but we are working underneath the rules that are set before us. God teaches us and tells us in his word that we should be, we should abide by the laws of the land. And so in, in an effort to steal away the power and the fuel from the spread of this epidemic, we have made the choice in the election to be able to broadcast with a small amount of people here at, on, uh, on site so that everybody can stay home, stay with their families, stay safe, and we can slow this epidemic. And I believe, I believe that there is a healing involved in this. Amen, somebody? Amen. And I know that you are here to be able to have that too. That you know that even though we are asking for one another, we are present in the spirit. And I am with you right now. And I want your spirit to come and join us right now. Just, just begin to send your positive energy all the way from where you are to where we are. We will send ours from here back to you. And I know that God is going to have his way. Amen. We can still have a little church. Is that all right? Is that all right out there in the world? Is that all right out there in Facebook Live? Is that all right everybody here? We are still going to have church in here today. And so there is a word from the Lord, and I want to make
make sure that we give you that word on today. There's no reason for us to have to be here any, uh, too, too long on today, but we're going to give space Amen. for the word to work. Amen. We're going to give room for the word to work. I am here on fifth Sunday, the first fifth Sunday in 2020, and we are, I think it's the first fifth Sunday, maybe it's the second. It's Women's Day, and we want to honor our women on today. God bless you, missionaries and mothers. Uh, God bless you out there in the in Facebook community. All the mothers that and the babies, they've been out of school and you've been mothering uh, continuously now to them. We thank God for each and every one of you. We honor you here in this, uh, in this church um, as if you were here right now. We want to thank you for being a part of our family. Don't let the fears of this world get to you. Don't let the stresses of this world get to you. You are going to be okay. And God is going to make sure that he gives you the encouragement that you need in order to be able to make it. Amen? Amen. Amen. We would normally have a woman come in and sing, the women's chorus come in and sing, and we're not here uh, in that capacity. But if you would, will you join with me with this song? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, 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 because what's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In this particular time that we're in, we know that we need a doctor. There, there's not enough tests to go around for everybody to be able to identify who has it and who doesn't. We don't, and everybody can't go to the hospital at the same time. And, um, that's the biggest concern that we have. But how many of you know that God is a healer? Yes. That yes. he can heal us right where we are. That we don't have to go run into the hospital or to the doctor's office in order to get our healer. We can reach out to him right now, right from where we are, and get our, he get our healing right where we are. And for that reason, we can say, healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Because what's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's our doctor. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Come on, let me hear you. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Oh. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Because what's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When he's done all the doctoring in our lives, when he's done all the healing in our lives, when he has saved us from all the things of this world, because he's our Savior too, we simply say thank you. Say that with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Say that last part again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Say it one more time. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hope you feel a little bit better now that you are joined in lockstep with us. I hope that you feel like you are a part of everyone that is joined in with us on today. We surely miss being in each other's presence. But we know that our spirits are joined together and we are so thankful that you are here. I want to make sure that you know we are still preparing meals here at the church um, that we will be delivering after service on today. The, the crew that is here, the kitchen crew, is making and preparing meals to be able to deliver out to the community. So if there are those of you who know you need meals for you or the children, why don't you text us right here in the, uh, in the uh, comments below, and we will make sure that you can, uh, 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 we'll contact you if we need additional information, and we'll make a, a swing by your place. We probably won't stay very long. You might not even see our faces, but we'll come and drop the food off and knock and wave while we're driving off because we want to make sure that we are being obedient to our distancing we want to make sure that you have what you need. And so if there's anybody out there, higher ground or otherwise, 
If you need some food, if you need some help, let us know. Put some comments down in the, lo in the bottom. Uh, we can con you don't have to put all your business out there, but you can tell us that you need us to talk to you and we'll reach out to you and we will follow up with you immediately and we'll get back to you and figure out what we need to do in order to get you what you need. If that's all right, just say amen. And it's amen. All right. Amen. We have been working on a series uh, dealing with transforming your mind. And oh, what a time that we live in where we really, truly need to transform our minds. Amen, somebody? And so what we have been, what we've been dealing with is the understanding that our mind is a terrible thing to waste. And we don't want to waste our minds. We don't want to, we don't want to put our mindset in such a place where we can't do or be what God has called us to be. But we want to recognize that God has given us the opportunity to make a decision about things. We're going off of the, the, the root of our scripture is, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so sometimes our transformations, the greatest sense, the greatest opportunity for our transformation first starts with us making our minds up. The first scripture, we were working on seven scriptures, and the first scripture that I gave you came out of the book of Deuteronomy, where you made the decision between death and life. So Deuteronomy 30 and 19 says, today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses, and now I call on heaven and earth, whereas the choice you make, oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. And you are sitting in a situation right now, and that's what the church is, not just this church, but every church has made. We made choices that we choose life so that we and our descendants might live. And choosing God and following God, you see, the thing that you got to understand is, is that if there are no laws that righteous need to follow, because if we are living righteously, we are already following the highest order of law, which is God's law. And that's why we are doing this this way. That's the reason why the church is, is performing its duties. They can't shut church down. They can't make church stop because church is not a building. It is not a business. Church is in our hearts. Amen. But we have to choose church. We have to choose life in order to perpetuate the mission that God's church has been called for. And so we, and we talked about that um, so, uh, several weeks ago. When we make that decision, when we make that choice, it sets us up to be able to be ready for that transformation. So we go from Deuteronomy 30 and 19 to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And there it says that uh, do not conform to the behavior and the customs of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you want to make sure that as you are working your life, as you are looking at your life, look over your life and think some things over, you will begin to realize that there are some decisions. It's not just the actions. It's not the stuff that came from those actions. Really what you have to realize is that if you have come to a place where in your life where you realize is, if that if you can make some decision differently in your past, where you are right now would be different. Well, I want you to speak to your future self and say, self, what decision can I make right now that will put me on a better path for me moving forward? That will put me closer to the place that I want to be, that I want where I want to go, doing the things that I want to do. And you can speak to your future self right now. You may not be able to transform your past. You may not be able to change or alter what has already happened, but you can be ready for your future. Amen, somebody. You can be ready for your, the greatest move that your future has ever seen. But pastor, making a move like that is so fearful. Pastor, making a move like that is so scary. I don't know what I can do. And so I want you to, rec I want you to understand that everybody is risking it all. And that the difference between those who succeed and those who don't succeed are, it, it is only those who decide that failure is not going to make them quit. That I'm not going to be afraid of failure because successful people fail all the time. As a matter of fact, successful people fail more often. 
It's just that once they fail, once they fall, they don't stop. They continue to move forward. They get up again. And you ought not find yourself trapped by the lie that says because you fail, you should stop. Amen. You should not fall for the lie that says that once you have failed, you should quit. That you should walk away. You should give up. You should throw in the towel. Because the Lord did not give you the spirit of fear. And that's our next scripture, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God did not give you the spirit of fear. So if you're afraid, what I want you to know is that does not come from God. Amen. Amen. Fear does not come from God. God has not given you the spirit of fear. He has given you power Amen. and love and a sound mind. Yes. And so in a situation like we are in right now where there is disease and sickness all the way around us, what is our mindset? What should we be doing? And what you need to know and what you need to understand and appreciate is that there is a plan for your success, even in this. And we are executing one of those plans right now. I don't believe that any church will have the option to go back to a world where they don't have a social, uh, a, a, a social media existence. I don't think that any church is going to be able to exist in a world where they don't have some type of video service that they will realize that there are saints everywhere that are sick and shut in, that there are people that are out there in places that they'll never be able to get to, that they realize that they will have to act differently than what they have ever acted before. Very much like transforming the church mind. Ooh, somebody say amen. Amen. The church has to transform its mind too. And if the church is transforming its mind, the only way that the church as an organization does that is if the people itself transforms its mind. You have to change how you minister or execute God's word or execute God's plan in your life. You might need to learn how to work that social media. You might have to take back that curse that you put on Facebook, saying, I will never get on Facebook Live because ain't nobody on there a blessing to me. You might be the blessing Facebook needs. Amen. You might be the blessing that YouTube Live needs. Don't run away from the world. God did not give you fear. Transforming your mind means transforming your understanding. Transforming your mind means transforming your direction. Transforming your mind means transforming your attitude. Transforming your mind means transforming your mouth. It means transforming your heart. It means transforming your house. It means transforming your job. It means transforming everything else that you've got going on. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Start thinking about these things differently. You have to think differently about how you socialize with people right now. Look at how God is going to get the glory out of this. Yes. Even this, even this, God is going to get the glory out of it. Even this, it's going to be our right sense. Yes. Everything yes. that the enemy is meant for not, God will turn it around for good. And what you, what you want to recognize and what you want to know is that God is blessing you right now. Yes. He's blessing you while you were in your house. You have been in your house longer than you have probably ever been in your house at any one time. Looking at the same people and you thinking to yourself, Lord have mercy, can I deal with these people yet any longer? Amen. But Jesus looked at his disciples and said, could you not pray with me for just an hour? They fell asleep on Jesus for praying. And, they, and he took them with him everywhere he went. But he also promised them, he said, there's going to come a time when I'm not going to be here. Well, I'm not going to be here to, 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 uh, to work with you, to pray with you, to make you do the things that you need to get done. Some of us, this is the longest amount of time you spent around your children. You need time with your children. Transform your understanding of the relationship you have with your children. Turn off the TV. Turn off the, the, the entertainment and bring them into a room and sit down with them and talk to them and have an understanding that you've never had with them before. Transform your mind. Transform your understanding. Transform the way that you are working this whole thing through. Because at the end of this, when we emerge from this, it will be a much richer relationship that you will have with the people that are closest to you. And perhaps that's what God is calling us to. To renew our mind and our understanding about how we are to move forward in this world. Because you're only talking to the people you really want to talk to now. If you run out to the grocery stores right now, you don't talk to anybody. We were out, my wife and I were out yesterday, and we were uh, uh, grabbing the essentials, and you were doing everything, that, you were doing the same thing that everybody else was 
doing. Nobody was looking up. Nobody was waving. I promise you that I was not. I was, you know, trying to make sure that I still be a blessing to people. But even so, we have to keep that six-foot bubble around us. And so what that means is, is that when you put that bubble around you, you, you're not letting anybody in. So that's fine for now because it's going to be like that. But I believe that when we emerge from this, this, this scare of epidemic, this, this concern of a pandemic, the, the, the threat of an invisible enemy that is seeking to destroy us, when we emerge from this, that we will come out of this with a faith and a love that it has never existed in our life before. You will be different because God has given you the opportunity and you have made the choice to transform your mind. Amen. Amen. I want to speak now, if I can, from the book of Exodus. Because we must recognize that the transforming of your mind has an effect not on just you, but it has an effect on everybody else that touches you, those that come from you. I want to go, if you can, to the book of Exodus, chapter 34. We're going to the book of Exodus, chapter 34, and I want to read one verse for you. 34, verse 7. The book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 7. And it reads, keeping mercy for, for, the, for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, but uh, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. And what I want you to be able to take from this is that your decisions to transform yourself, your decisions to make a difference or make a change and go in a different direction right now, is not only going to affect you, but it's going to affect your children's children's children. Some of you, some of you have lives and have testimonies of a different person that existed inside of your flesh at a different time in your life. That you existed in a place where you were living a different kind of way. Some of you even had different names. Come on now. Who you were on your license. That's not what you were. You had names that were a little bit more, shall we say, provocative. You had names like, like candy bars. You had names like after cars. You know, you, you, you were smooth like a Lexus or you were uh, sweet as honey or you had different types of names and different types of ways of being known by. And they, these names were indicative of the life that you were living. But God called you out of that. He called you to sanctify you from that. And that happened because there was a moment where you made a decision to be something else. Now, some of us were doing that and we had children born into that lifestyle and to that life that we were living. And those children, there's a marketable difference. You can look and you can know that there's a difference between the children for those who have had children. When you, if you had children before your transformation, and you had children after your transformation, you know that there's a difference between the children who knew you before your transformation and the children who never knew you after your transformation. They, they didn't know what you were like. And the way, that, the way that those children see you, those different children that see you, they see you differently. Yes. If you have grandchildren, your grandchildren know you now. But they don't know you the way that your children knew you. Amen. Your grandchildren, those of you who are grandparents out there in the audience, you're, you know that your grandchildren hear stories from your children. And they look at they look at the they look at you, that sweet grandparent of theirs, <laughs> and they can't even imagine. What are you talking about? But when your children try to explain the 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 the, the the, the justice that was executed on you yes. in the name of proper parenting, in the name of, of good training, of good home training, those grandchildren are like, I can't see it, and I therefore I don't believe. And you can sit there and, and smile knowing that 
that there was a moment where you made a choice. Thank you, Lord. There was a moment where you made a choice to be and to become something different. That's the transformation that we're talking about. And that because of that, you can stop the curse. Some of us are living in family curses. You're living in curses that have been visited upon you because of what your mama or what your grandma did or what your grandfather or, 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 or your father did. And you think that because of the, of, the, of the problems and the situations that come from you genetically that you should be able to own that. And that's not true. That the enemy has come to you to lie and to confuse you. And that the sins of your father have come to visit upon you. But I'm here to tell you right now that with you and the renewing of your mind, you can stop the curse. Yes, yes. But stopping the curse means that you have to come to a place right now. Where you come to a place right now where you make a decision to choose life. Make that decision right now. Yes. And tell the Lord, Lord, I choose life. I choose life, and I want life right now. John 10, 10 says that I come, Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But in order for him to be able to come in, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. You still have to open up the door. He will not, but you have to make that decision. Yes. Choose yes. life. Yes. And then once you have chosen that, chosen that life, now you can have it more abundantly. Amen, somebody? Amen. So we see that in order for us to effect the change and to have a, ful a fulfilling transformation, we have to make sure that we understand the ramifications of our decision. That I, 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 if, if, my mother, if my mother's mother was a whoremonger and my mother was a whoremonger, therefore I'm just going to be a whoremonger too. That is not true. Because my father was an alcoholic, or because my father's father was an alcoholic, I'm an alcoholic too. That is not true. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let go of those issues and let go of those, those, those sayings so that you can walk into the wonderful and marvelous light. This is the reason why Nicodemus was told of the, 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 the story of being born again. And he said, how can a man be born again? Because if I am born again and I am born of my father, then those curses must die. They can't, they can't be applied to me because I am no longer of my earthly, but I am of my heavenly father. So if we, if we see the, re, the results of our, if we see the results of our change, fantastic. If we see the results of our transformation, fantastic. But here's what I need you to understand. Make sure you do, uh, that you know that your transformation is not just for you, but it is for your children, it is for your children's children, it is for your, uh, your, your, your nephews and your nieces, it is for your cousins, it is for your neighbor, it is for your friends, it is for your people. If you go, if you walk outside your house at the end of service today and just walk around your house praying, you don't have to tell nobody what you're doing. But when they see you praying, you're going to bless somebody. When they see you uh, uh, blessing your home and your house, then you're going to bless somebody. But you have to make that decision and that choice to do that. If they see you praying while you shopping and buying groceries, they're going to see you and they, you're going to bless somebody. If you shop because when you walk to the, into the store, you were able to find what you needed and what you needed to have in your home, and you give God the glory, you're going to bless somebody. But you have to make the choice and the decision to do that. And that blessing is going to cause ripples to happen because God's word does not come back void. And you will bless the generations and the generations and the generations. One more scripture that I want you to have is that we have come to this place where we realize that every single thing that we thought is playing a part in this. Go with me, if you will, to the book of 2 Corinthians. We're going to be in chapter 10. Book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, and we're going to read verse 5. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Your thoughts need to be held captive. 
Your thoughts convict you. Your thoughts make us make you guilty. Your thoughts get us get you in trouble. We think things often, but I heard a preacher say that you may not be able to prevent a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep him from making a nest in your hat. Amen. So you should, even though the thoughts come, you don't have to hold on to them, that you can keep your thoughts captive. Some of us, we have a, a direct line from our mind to our mouths, and we say things that we ought not say, and we activate things that we ought not activate, when what we want to do and what the scripture is telling us is to be captive, captive, or captivate our mind, keep those things shut, keep them closed, that even though it may be there, it may be visible, is that Christ that's speaking through you? Hold your thoughts. Bring your thoughts into captivity. Let your heart be in control. Keep your mind saved. We have moved from a situation where we don't have the opportunity to be uh, loose. You are watching us on Facebook Live. There is going to be a YouTube video of the same thing. Uh, we are talking to the entire world these days. Amen. People are they are commenting and making comments on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all of these other places, and they're saying mean and horrible things. Lies are everywhere, right? But God said that there will come a day and a time where people will not obey sound doctrine. And we live in a time like that where people won't just take the truth anymore. And so you want to make sure that you are not counted amongst that number, that you obey sound doctrine that if it's not true you don't say it that if it's not true you don't you don't help it keep going the coronavirus has has been issued as a physical representation of what our spiritual life can be like and if we allow lies to live that's just as dangerous as any virus or any any uh, uh, pandemic that is out there and we have to be able to shut that down and we do that by doing exactly what we're doing physically now. You're at home and we're shut in. That scripture right there in 2 Corinthians is saying to, to, to bring your thoughts into a shut down mindset. That the wild thoughts that are not of God, that are not of blessing, that are not of encouragement, that they should be shut down too. You should keep them uh, sheltered in your mind until such time that God can remove them completely. And if you can do that, if you can allow that to happen, imagine what happens if everybody got rid of every evil thought in their mind. What would that look like if everybody got rid of every evil thought in their mind? What would that, what kind of world would we live in if there were no evil thoughts in the mind? We don't have to even think about what it would be like if we were just talking about uh, what people said. We don't even have to worry about actions if we got rid of every evil thought. If we could just bring into control the thinking that people would have, what kind of world would we live in? Isn't that an amazing understanding? Isn't that an amazing way to believe? Isn't that a fantastic world that we can live in? And that's what God is calling us to, to live in a world where we can control our thoughts. The book of James says that any man who can control his, his tongue can control his whole mind. And what you need to know is that if you can bring into control that transformed mind of yours, you can shut down evil from being able to get within six feet of you, from 12 feet of you. If you can control the thoughts in your mind, the enemy won't even want to come into your house. I can't go into that. There's too much light in there. I can't go into there. The, the evil hides in the deep, dark crevices of places, but, but that when the light comes in, the light and dark can't exist in the same place together. It's got to run. It's got to run and it's got to get out. And so when you expose your thoughts and your mindset, when you expose those evil places in your mind to light, the darkness has to leave. Yes. And that transformed mind now has more room to grow positively. Thank you, Lord. 
that transformed mind has more room to be able to exercise and to be able to, to move out and to do the things that it's able to do. How much more powerful would you be if you could captive, you could hold captive those negative thoughts? You could keep those tempted, the, temptated, the, 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 the words of temptation out of your heart and out of your mind. If you could, if you could just hold on until, until it blesses you, you can just hold on to those things that the enemy was trying to suggest to you. I implore you right now to say to your mind, get in line with my spirit. Amen. Say that with me. Mind, get in line with my spirit. Mind, get in line with my, mind, spirit. Get in line with my spirit. Paul said that, that my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. And you need to know that, that, that you are not alone in how your spirit is doing. You are trying to do the right thing. I think everybody in this world, everybody who has ever lived, can say the exact same thing, that I'm trying to do the same thing. But you, you, have failed. Guess what? So have we. Amen. Amen. So have we. Saints, they ain't nothing but sinners who've fallen down and got back up. And so, even though we fall down, we get back up again. Your, your faith, the opportunity you have right now, is to be able to make a decision that says, I will transform my mind. I will transform my mind and therefore I will transform myself and I will give an opportunity for my future self to walk in the blessings that my present self has made available to me. And you can do that by shifting your mind right now. I want to pray with you. I want to give you an opportunity to accept the Lord right now. And in accepting the Lord, it is, it is not the end of the process. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of the process to accept the Lord into your life and to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. You are, you are a part of your own change, but this is the beginning. Transformation, we're talking about transforming your mind. This is not an overnight process that we're talking about. We're talking about living your life, what God has blessed you with, moving forward into the future moving it into a place where you can do something that God has never that God, something that God has always wanted for you but that people could never give to you and that's a life that is in control not free from challenges don't, don't let nobody sell you on that this is not prosperity that we're preaching here this is reality this is truth if I could do if I could say it like the young people would say can I be 100 with you you still don't have problems all right you still gonna have problems. You still gonna have issues. You still gonna have to go to work. You still gonna have bills. You still gonna have uh, 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 situations and circumstances that will come upon you. But let me tell you right now: let not your heart be troubled. Though they are out there, though I am pressured on every side, though I have situations and circumstances around me, I might be troubled, but I'm not in distress. If God is for me. Can be against who? Yes. Who can be against me? That's right. That's right. But the process of you going through that and the place where you are right now, and the thing that I want you to understand is that your faith is tested through times like this. That you are sitting in situations and circumstances where if it was not for the test, you would not have the testimony. And what you need to have, what you want to know, and what you always should keep in your heart is that while I'm going through something, it is an opportunity for me to see God move in a new way. Yes. That new test, I've never seen this before. The world has never seen this before. This, this situation that we're in right now, the reason why, the reason why this epidemic is so bad it's because it's a virus that our bodies have never seen before. 
scientifically speaking, this particular version of, 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 of sickness, our bodies have never seen this before. We've had flus for years. And our body has antibodies in it. It has, it has immune systems in it that can deal with a lot of the things that are out here currently, right now, that are in this world that can, that, that can harm us, that can, that can seek us out and do us harm. But your body has been set up, it's been, it's been practicing. If you eat right and, 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 and exercise a little bit and uh, uh, take care of yourself, your body is able to take on the challenges that come, the, you know, the, the coughing that somebody else does, the sneezing that's going on around you, dirty surfaces and stuff. If you just maintain a little bit of healthy protocol, your body can handle it. And that's what God wants you to know right now. Is that with a little bit of spiritual care, with a little bit of spiritual self-care, you too can stay healthy. Amen. You can stay spiritually healthy. Yes. Pray, read your Bible, go to church. Amen. It's as easy as washing your hands, keeping your keeping your hands out of your face, right? And 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 making sure you keep a safe distance from those things that you know will kill you. And spiritually speaking, same thing. Stay away from those things that you know will kill you. Don't walk into temptation when you know that's what it is. Transform your mind. I don't have to be around that anymore. That's right. I don't have to be around this influence, these people, this situation, these circumstances. Let it go. So I want to thank you for participating with us tonight or today. But I want to pray with you. The way that this starts is that we accept Jesus Christ in our life. Many people want to know Jesus, but not everybody knows how. Mm -hmm. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9 says, If I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, shall be saved. Can you say Jesus Christ is Lord? Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is, is Lord. Lord. Come on, Facebook family, you out there. Can you say Jesus Christ is Lord? Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. Lord. If you're in a house with somebody right now, they may or may not be paying attention to what you're doing, but you might want to go and grab them real quick because in the next 45 seconds, this prayer can change their life. Come on now. Grab hold of them, stand next to them, reach out in our direction and pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. I believe you died. I believe you died. We're buried. We're buried. And on the third day. And on the third day. God the Father. God the Father. Raised you from the dead. Raised you from the dead. Right now, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus. I open the door to my heart. I open the door to my heart. And I invite you into my heart. And I invite you into my heart. As my personal Savior. As my personal Savior. Amen. Amen. According to the prayer that you just prayed, where is the Lord Jesus right now? In my heart. He, if you said he is in your heart, then you said it right. The book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. And you are saved. Come on and say, thank the Lord. Come on and say, thank the Lord. Say, thank the Lord. We are here for each other. Whether we are here in person or whether we are here virtually, we are here in person. We want to make sure that you know that we are here. Amen, somebody? Yes, Amen. We, are, we want to thank you for coming in and being a part of our services on today. Uh, again, we want to make sure that you know that uh, for the families that are out there, uh, especially those with children, if you need some food, put a comment down there in the, in the comment section, and we'll contact you after service, and we'll make sure we follow up with you and get you Amen. something there at the church. We're going to make some deliveries and some drop-offs. Higher Ground is a part of this community. We're going to do everything we can in our community, just like a lot of other churches are doing, to make sure that we service our community the best way that we know how. And so we want to make sure that everybody is covered, that everybody uh, is, is um, uh, protected, and that everybody is safe. And so we want to make sure that you too know that and you feel free to let anybody else know. And if they were if they're within our reach, we're going to make sure that we reach out to them and make, make our presence known to them. I want to thank you. I want to thank those that are here that have come together to make this possible. 
this might be the way that we are doing things for a week or two. We don't know. We are paying attention to what's going on. And I don't want anybody to panic. There's still going to be church. There's still going to be Bible study. There's still going to be different things going on. And we are making sure that we stay beneath the numbers that we need to stay beneath. If we have to, we will virtualize almost everything so that you know you can still be a part of what we're doing. Keep your distance. Stay safe. Yes. Stay safe. Be obedient. Stay safe. Stay sanctified. Yes, right? Yes. This is not anything that is outside of the normal that we should already have. We want to love on everyone. Don't lose yourself in the midst of this. Don't let the devil get you all cornered up. Know that we are still here and that your family, your church family is here for you. We are getting ready to get out of here and to close things down and move on to the rest of the day. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be empowered. Tell, call somebody on the phone. Tell them that you love them. Yes. Don't let people be left out of this in this time and in this day. Amen. All right, Father, we thank you and praise you. We thank you for those that came to be here. We thank you for those that had the desire to be here. No matter when they are seeing this video or participating in this, whether they're doing it live or whether they're doing it in, uh, later, we ask, Lord God, that your blessings, which are forever and a day, are able to reach out to them, Lord God, wherever they may be, whether they are at home or wherever they are, that you will touch them, touch their homes, keep them safe, Lord God. Put your angels of protection around them, that you will continue to bless them and keep them. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done and what you are getting ready to do is so much more powerful. We thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Every heart saying, thank God. Thank, thank God. God. Amen. 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 Make sure you tell somebody you love them. God bless you. God bless you all. And we will see you soon. Amen. Amen. Love you. Talking to you.